How's it going YouTube? Uh, back with an update technically to the guide I did at the start of Season 0. I uh, went over to a Rogue and played that for a while, did beat Uber Lilith, did all that kind of stuff. And then now, now I'm back on the Barbarian and I have a little bit better understanding of the game and, the, and how everything worked, stuff like that. So, so I've made some adjustments uh, from my original build guide to basically to what you see now. And this is the, the version of the build with all the aspects and everything that I'm going to take to end game uh, to 100 and all that. So it's a lot of fun, um, you know, big bleeds and just run off and things just kind of die it's it's pretty cool um you know we made some changes and now we use uh steel grasp so this this is a lot more fun and it's a lot more suitable for the build but let's get right into it in our skill tree we use lunging strike uh mainly just to generate fury and to gain berserking on crit we crit a lot and this whole build is not the whole build but a lot of what we do is based on berserking so this helps us uh basically have you know 100 percent uptime on berserking which which really isn't that difficult to do if you've been playing uh barbarian you know once you invest a little bit it's pretty easy uh moving on uh rend five points allocated four from our gloves enhanced violent just for that increased vulnerability if you're having fury, uh, fury problems just go ahead and go with furious uh two into endless just for more generation i prefer these two points here over this one and then i can keep the damage on vulnerability on vulnerable enemies uh, and then we just take one in rallying cry and then enhanced and tactical uh, challenging shout enhanced and tactical challenging shout and then we put four in war cry if you feel like you want a little more uh, defense you know you can move these into challenging shout or split them up a little bit split the difference whatever but uh, i felt like my survivability was good i wanted the damage and then we take enhanced and power and then booming voice this is a must all three um, anything that uses more than one shout you're going to take all three of these uh, guttural yell we take two just for some damage reduction uh, three in both aggressive uh, resistance and prolific fury uh, just fury generation and uh, damage reduction then one in pit fighter just to get three for no mercy we slow and uh, you know increase crit strike against slowed enemies and then here we put one point into hamstring which gives us the slowed enemies uh, you know we put a bleed on everything especially when we use core uh, our core skill so um, you know there we don't we you know 10% slow is nice but really we we just like the crowd control effects and all the benefits that come along with it and then three to cut to the bone just more damage to vulnerable enemies uh, we take steel grasp now this helps us just pull enemies uh, in a tight little group so that we can just swipe them all at once and then we take enhanced uh, for the vulnerable just another form these these are the main reasons why you use it I take uh, the, the the last charge because berserking is up so often you don't really need it from this but um, you know the these neither of these are honestly even necessary these two are necessary this one is just kind of a, a nice bonus um, so you can even move that somewhere else if you prefer it. Uh, then we go two in thick skin for just a little extra fortify and counter offensive um, just for increased damage because we have a lot of fortify and a lot of fortify generation. So we get that damage bonus uh, fairly often, most of the time. Uh, heavy handed, all three points just for that increased crit strike damage with two handed weapons. Both weapons we use are the two handed weapons. And then uh, Gushing Wounds, this is just, you know, you have the same amount of uh, chance to put uh, a bigger bleed on the enemy. It's equivalent to your critical strike chance, and then the increased damage is equivalent to your critical strike damage. So uh, this is a big one, and then the, the bleed explosions are nice um, just for, you know, clear and stuff like that. Uh, Paragon. Uh, first default board take both rare nodes and then we use disembowelment um, this is just good for cooldown on our um, on our abilities on our shouts and all that and then up here this is blood rage we don't actually go up here because we have berserking up all the time we don't really need to waste the points here uh, but we put mortal draw here uh, mainly I need to finish leveling it up for that bonus the swapping weapons has an 18% chance to cause the 
uh, skills damage to critically strike. So basically because you're typically hitting one, two, three times with uh, lunging strike and then swiping once or twice with rend. And then so that that first one will, you know, have a have a massive crit strike chance increase. So that's really nice. Um, and then again, both rare nodes, just uh, damage to bleeding enemies, damage reduction, and then damage to bleeding enemies. Uh, and then we path over here to Decimator. Um, this, again, we, we might take this. Uh, I haven't decided on a, on either a last board yet, which is basically a last board is just a glyph or um, taking, you know, maybe Carnage, which we'll get up to this in a sec, and then Decimator and just kind of filling it in. I, I feel like from what I've tested, that's typically uh, the better way to go. Um, but there are some builds that would benefit more from another glyph than uh the the uh legendary nodes so so we'll see but that's more along what i'm leaning towards is taking the couple legendary and then maybe not running a, a last glyph uh but anyways so here we have uh, revenge and this just gives us bonus to our rare nodes and this is our uh, vulnerability stuff so we get the damage reduction and the increase that still obviously needs to be leveled up uh, then we cruise up here to take some more vulnerable damage and then this is hemorrhage. Uh, right away, we path to the glyph socket and we put exploit. This is just for that, you know, guaranteed vulnerability for three seconds every 20 seconds. Again, if you're unaware, you can still apply it in other forms. You can only apply it every 20 seconds in, in this form with this glyph. Uh, but then again, physical damage over time, damage reduction from bleeding enemies. And then, and, and to be honest, I pathed over here first before I took all this stuff. So I came over here uh, and I took Wrath, which just is crit strike damage. And then obviously what's really nice is that critical strikes generate three fury. So that just helps uh, keep that up. Um, and then we take both nodes here. These are the berserking nodes. Uh, again, we might end up pathing over here as opposed to taking another glyph here. But I'm kind of just storing my points up at the top there just because I don't have anywhere to put them as, until I level up some of these other glyphs. Um, and then, you know, the stats are always nice. And then again, uh, after you've pathed over here and done all this, come down here to uh, Enraged. And then path up through to hemorrhage, which again, this is nice. You know, when you're fighting a boss or something, they start, you know, after three seconds, they're bleeding the entire fight. So that, that basically gets applied and it's just there. Um, and then uh, just more physical damage over time. Physical damage is a pretty powerful little damage node. And, uh, and that's it. So let's move over to the gear real quick. Uh, we'll go through real quick. I'll just basically explain the important roles and then the aspect. Everything else is just kind of, you know, I, I'd like to replace or kind of up to you. So on helmet, uh, we have 35% uh, gain chance to gain fortify. Um, while berserking, again, berserking is always up. This is a lot. It hits often. As far as the rolls, cooldown reduction is is a must, and uh, and that's about it. The other life on kill is really really nice. I personally prefer my helmets to have it. You know, maybe maybe you're all right without it, and then obviously attack speed, armor, those are all good. But cooldown reduction is a must. Uh, then we actually use the unique chest, Rage of Harrogath. It's a lot of bleeding damage. And then obviously it helps with that cool down, the cooldowns when we're fighting bosses and stuff like that. Um, onto the gloves, must have uh, the rend, plus four to rend, crit strike chance, attack speed, and then all stats. <coughs> Excuse me, voice cracked. I'm going to leave that in. Um, wow, yeah, see, it kind of froze me up a little bit. But again, uh, all stats, just nice to have. Um but that that one's not important you you could you might you know prefer something else maybe one of the lucky hits or something like that pants uh oh sorry aspect you know what we're just going to take that again as far as gloves uh plus four to rend is a must crit strike chance is a must i think attack speed is a must uh all stats was just the nice to have that could be something else maybe one of the lucky hits or something like that uh and then as far as aspect uh damaging an enemy with the core skill has a 40 percent chance to extend the duration of berserking just helps with uptime 
Uh, and then pants, uh, nothing special here. Uh, the dex is nice. You get a little crit, life, armor, which is pretty standard. Berserking duration is nice. Uh, and then an aspect, uh, you know, 0.4% increased armor when you deal damage up to 40. Pretty standard on most builds. Uh, on the boots, uh, movement speed, I think, is a must on all builds. I, I, it's just crazy how slow you have to walk around without it. And then the others are kind of whatever. You Maybe you need some stats. Fury cost reduction is nice, but really movement speed is what's most important here. Uh, weapon uh, for our bludgeoning, and this is actually what we use for lunging strike. We take critically stri critical strikes with core skills, increase your attack speed by ideally 50%. We're at 48. Um, here, it's vulnerable, core, crit strike, and stats, I think, is what you want on your weapons. Those are the ones. Damage to close enemies is a good one, too. But otherwise, core, vulnerable, crit, and then big strength or stats if you need them. I like to put stats on, on my weapons just because it's, you know, good base damage. And it helps me keep my board, uh, all of my bonuses and stuff like that active. First slashing weapon. Um, again, same thing here. Across the board, it's all weapons, stats, vulnerable damage, core damage, critical strike damage. Those are, those are what you want, at least in my opinion. Uh, same thing. Oh, as far as aspects, skills deal up to 20% increased damage based on available. You can also use the one every time you, what is it, you hit three times with a basic skill, you can get an increase up to 30%. I might even prefer that one because you typically are hitting two to three times with lunging strike anyways. So that one might be better, but this one's fine. Um, we have good fury regeneration. Weapon, same thing. Stats, all that stuff. Basic skill attack speed. This just helps us get to our rend a little quicker. Uh, this is a big one. This is a huge damage. You'll see this go off on elites and stuff like that. Uh, stunning a bleeding enemy deals 72% of their total bleeding amount to them as fizz. So you'll just see sometimes just elites just take huge chunks of damage. So this is pretty cool. Again, all stats, crit, vulnerable. First ring, uh, this this one, uh, as far as aspects, you gain four fury per second while berserking. You can also use the one where you gain fury while you can also use the one while you gain fury while uh, shouts are active. But um, I feel like my berserking is up more than my shouts, so this this is more beneficial. And then crit strike chance, crit strike damage, lucky hit, and then, you know, vulnerable damage or, you know, fizz or whatever, whatever you want there. But vulnerable would be ideal, I think. And then uh, up here, uh, this is pretty standard for most uh, builds that use more than one shout. Um, whenever you cast a shout, its cooldown is reduced based on the amount of enemies nearby. And then again, same thing, crit strike chance, lucky hit, there's vulnerable and damage to bleeding. I'd like to get rid of damage to bleeding because I like my hits. I like my big hits to apply on the first one. Damage to bleeding enemies implies that I've already had to hit it at least once to um, get that damage. So it's fine. It's okay. But I prefer to have it apply right off the bat and not have any, you know, conditions. Then amulet. Uh, again, I think my my main roles here are uh, movement speed and cooldown reduction. Outburst. You know, you get the thorns in the tree. I, you know, it's it's fine. The damage is nice, but um, you know, this is this isn't the easiest piece to to replace. Uh, you know, amulets are tough. So you 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 know, when you find one that's got a couple roles you like on it, you know, you're typically using it for a little while. But ideally, that that top line, uh, the outburst passive gets replaced with you know something better um and then for aspect whenever you deal direct damage while berserking inflict 45 percent of the base damage is additional bleeding so that just adds you know bigger bleeds again we're always berserking so uh there you go expertise i use a sword i think i feel like the extra bleeding damage and extra damage after you've killed a bleeding enemy uh is is the best for this um secondary if i had a better i used an axe for a long time until i got a better sword if i had a better two-handed axe i would be fine with using the two-handed axe ex expertise uh it's a lot of damage and crit strike chance so uh that's pretty nice so that's it, guys. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Go ahead and post in the comments, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll see you for the next one.